Hello, my friends. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. P to the O to the W. P O W. And uh, we've been doing trade stuff all the way up into the trade deadline, and we're still going to do trade stuff after the deadline um, because we're going to be looking at what could be happening in the off season. There's lots of stuff. I'm going to be also giving you my playoff picks, so sub yourself up. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We did, well, we nailed a lot of the trades before the trade deadline. Drew to Florida, uh, Sherratt to Florida. Uh, oh, yeah, the big one was Lindholm to Boston. We got that. And so I just, I enjoy doing it. I seem to be pretty decent at uh, predicting where teams may, where players may go and where players may move. I just did the uh, Lafreniere uh, video, trade video, and oh my gosh, people are like, why would they trade Lafreniere? Well, go check it out. New York Rangers just might be on that. But today, we're going to be looking at another off-season move that I think is very likely to be to happen with how the Anaheim Ducks have been kind of performing and doing for themselves so far at the trade deadline. Uh, the, the trajectory they like to use. Yeah, I'm using big words today. Uh, that they seem to be going in by trading Lynn home and getting a whole bunch of draft picks, Manson. Uh, I think there's going to be more of that in the offseason. And so does another very good insider guy. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at a little bit of an article from a one Elliot Friedman that talks about John Gibson possibly being traded in the off season, and then we're going to look at five teams where Mr. Gibson could end up going to if that were to be the case. And we're going to look at John Gibson himself, how he's doing, uh, what his contract looks like, and all of those things now. So sub yourself up, Steel Flyers, all sports network. Also, you, if you sub up, you can be part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which I do live when I feel like at a clock, five days a week usually. When I feel like it. All right. Let's look at the next. All right. Here we go. This is the big article right here. Uh, could be busy in the offseason. Gibson on. Could be a busy offseason. Gibson on the move. Friedman was a guest on Oilers Now with jo Rob Bob Stoff Stoffer. And it's funny that he was a guest on there because Oilers just may be one of the five teams I'm talking about right now. And he expects this offseason to be busy with some teams looking to make serious changes. Winnipeg, Philadelphia, Montreal, among a few. There could be some big name players on the move. And a lot of action at the NHL entry draft. And uh, I believe that that could be the case as well. I think this summer will be wild, Friedman said, which is exciting. I think there's going to be a lot of really good players out there. He believes the Anaheim Ducks will have a conversation about goaltender John Gibson. With how many names the Ducks moved out at this last year's deadline, it is expected that the two sides will talk about his future with the team and if he wants to go through a full rebuild. Now, it's funny that this is mentioned by the great Elliot Friedman because I've been saying now for two years that John Gibson looks like a guy who is extremely frustrated. Um, and... Uh, for good reason. For good reason. It's it's tough being at his... Well, let's just look at John Gibson and we'll kind of see what he might be frustrated about. Uh, it's not his salary, that's for sure. He makes a pretty darn good dollar. But he's 28 years old. And if we look at his history, uh, first of all, we'll look at... He's got a no-trade clause, 10 teams that he won't trade to. So some of these teams might be on the list of his 10 teams, but I don't know what they are. So I'm just going to go with the teams that would probably be most interested in one John Gibson. Um, although this makes it a little difficult to get returned because the more teams that are wanting a goaltender that are on the list affects the leverage that Anaheim gets has to get a return. But that's okay. We'll look at it anyways and we'll talk about that. A um, lot of years left at 6.4. 6 and when... Gibson is on his game. He's worth all of that and more. 
I mean, he is just an absolute. Look at the some of the numbers he's put up in the past. 0 0.920 and a 2.06 and 15. 16, 17, 0.924. Uh, 2.926, but then there's this drop. Ever since 1819, the wheels have been kind of falling off of his numbers here. Is that because of Gibson? Somewhat I think it is, because I think that he just gets frustrated. And But for the most part, Anaheim's defense has been just brutal as they've been going through a rebuild and maybe not rebuilding fast enough and kind of holding on to players that shouldn't be there when you're trying to do a rebuild, a couple of veterans, until they brought in a fellow named Verbeek, their new general manager. And ever since they did that, look at Anaheim here, that's uh, Pat Verbeek. Um, he traded away a lot, a lot of players. He traded Lindholm, he traded Manson, he got a whole bunch of picks, which I think is exactly what they needed to do before this, and he identified it now. So if that's going to be the case, which is obviously a rebuild because Lindholm and Fowler, or Lindholm and uh, the, I was going to say Fowler might be on the list too. He's harder to trade though. Uh, Lindholm and Manson are older veterans. Uh, which makes it much more difficult for Anaheim to win when they already had a poor defense as it was. And John Gibson's going like, what am I going to do here? I'm 28 years old. I haven't won anything yet. I've been sitting in a rebuilding team that has been delaying the rebuild for three years. I think John Gibson might be just ready to move on and get himself into a team that's looking to win at least soon. Maybe not instantly but possibly, hopefully, instantly. And uh, I think Anaheim is willing to go that direction too based on the moves that they made at the deadline trading Lindholm and Manson. And we could see this happen more and they're going to do a proper rebuild, finally. Okay, so with all that in mind, $6.4 million for the next very long time till two... What was that? He's, he's got a, a great contract till 2027. If he is the Gibson that we all know and love for whatever team that he goes to and not the struggling Gibson the last couple of years. When, when, if somebody makes this trade, whoever makes the trade for Gibson is not going to be traded for the numbers you saw at the last three years of his last three years. They're going to believe that Gibson is what he was, what he is, an amazing goaltender. So I'm going to start off with, and this is going to seem odd to you with everything I just said, the Detroit Red Wings. So why would the Detroit Red Wings not be on, not be on his no trade list, you might ask? Well, because the Detroit Red Wings have been rebuilding for a while, and they actually had a pretty decent year this year. Things started to fall off at the end. But there was a time when they were in the playoff race. And Stevie Eisenman is the one going to be talking to Gibson and his agent and saying, we're ready. They've, we've got Bertuzzi. We've got Larkin, Raymond, Brana. Brana was hurt all year. Like if Brana would have been there, he's got six goals in 10 games. If Brana would have been there this year, by the way, if you're a Detroit fan and you're listening to this, sub yourself up because we do this fine content all the time. Uh, Joseph Bellino. Now, they're not going to have all these guys when they after they make this trade, of course. They also got Maurice Sider, who looks like a Vezina Trophy winning defenseman in the future. Uh, Philip Horonic, uh, Gustav Lindstrom. I mean, they have a lot of young pieces that are just bursting and ready to possibly be contenders very, very soon. Lucas Raymond and... Maureen Sider are probably going to be 1-2 for Rookie of the Year this year. Uh, fantastic young team that is on the precipice of being very good, especially if Steve Eisenman can tell Gibson we're going to be adding more at, in the offseason and starting to build ourselves up into what will be a dynasty probably in Detroit. it take a selling job, but... 
They do have in the moment Alex Nedeljkovic and uh, Thomas Grice, which is not what. And I said this when they when Detroit picked up Nedeljkovic. I don't think he's a goaltender that they're going to basically be pulled, pull, putting their hanging their hat on to be bringing themselves to contender status. His numbers have not been terrible, and he hasn't been terrible this year, and it certainly hasn't been all his fault, especially lately. The defense has left them totally lost. However, I, for somebody like Gibson to go in there and solidify this team defensively as they add more to their defense in the offseason, this team could be very good as soon as next year. And uh, so looking at that, what would Detroit have to give up in return? And like I said, it makes it a little difficult because he has a 10-team no-trade clause. Assuming that uh, Detroit is not on that list, then and several of the other teams we're going to talk about are on that list, it's going to be fairly expensive. I don't think they're going to be uh, Detroit's going to be getting Gibson on the cheap here. This is a guy that has shown in the past that he can be an absolute rock between the pipes. And Stevie Eisenman would only be trading for him if he believes he, he can get back to that, which I do believe he does. And I think just about anybody in the league would believe that Gibson certainly can. So a few players that they might be looking at here. Apparently, things have been rocky with Tyler, Tyler Bertuzzi here. And that might be because... Uh, he's going to be a restricted free agent in a year or two. And maybe the numbers they're talking about already is not something that they're interested in. Also, there's the whole incident about him not getting vaccinated. I don't know. It's I've read a couple articles where things were, he was kind of out there on the trade market. So maybe they look at a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi. They have Jacob Barana back. They've got a lot of young players coming up. In uh, Niederbach, uh, Master Simone, uh, Alvin Grew. I mean, they've got a ton of young players coming up in Detroit that might be able to take up that role. So you could look at that. If things all, if all are, is well in, in Detroit land with Bertuzzi, you could go several other directions here as well. You could strictly go with the first round pick this year, which would be about middle of the, uh, we, we can look at that right now, which would be, yeah, like a middle of the first round, uh, maybe a pay a, pay a suitor, or you can look at some of the depth on defense that they have as well. And I think Anaheim's going to want to restructure their defense. Whoops. I think Anaheim's going to want to restructure their defense after get, losing Manson and Lindholm and get, and they need players everywhere in Anaheim right now. Just good young players, especially ones that are almost ready to play now. I don't think they want to go into deep rebuild, and nobody does if uh, they don't have to. And I don't – Simone Evanson, I'm sure, is off the table. There's no way they're anybody – they're not even trading Simone Evanson straight up in this deal. They love, love, love him, and for good reason, he's fantastic. However, another lefty – there in William Volander has been doing very well in Sweden, not as well as Edmondson, but still looks like it could be a solid top four. And when you look at their overall depth, um, you've got all you've already got. Uh, they just got in Jake Wallman. Uh, you put Volander in there. They or sorry, you put in Edmondson in there, which will be soon. Maybe they could go. Eh, we don't need Volander as much as we as much as we do in other positions. Not to mention they still have Cooper Moore coming up, who could be ready right away. Kyle O'Coin. I mean, they've got fantastic D coming up. I think it's going to take somebody like that, though. It's going to take somebody like a Volander. Uh, you know, they have been having problems with Zadina. Maybe send him to Anaheim. He can, uh, Zadina, give him a, like, he, he just has him working out in Detroit. Anaheim might be able to get, uh, I'll tell you what, Zegris in Anaheim is a guy that seems to uplift players. Uh, we'll go to Anaheim here for a second. One guy that he's already done that with, and a guy that, Sonny Milano, 
moved around a lot and um, had a difficult time in Columbus and then came in and had 30 points in 51 games this year before he got injured. Looked really good. Trevor Zegers is a guy that seems to be able to have an energy with players. And I think Sedina just kind of needs that. Apparently he gets a little down on himself. And I, we're playing with a guy with the positivity of Zegers, I think would go a long way. So let's go Zedina, Volander, and maybe you get away with the second round pick on there in 2023 in the deep draft. What do you guys think about that for Gibson? Gibson, man. And I know you've got a, I know they have a young player, a, a young goaltender coming up in Kosa. Co I think that's his name. Uh, where is he? It's probably in their loan. Yeah. Kosa, Sebastian Kosa. Uh, but he's only 19 years old. He's going to be a ways away. And they're going to need somebody to bridge that gap. So uh, Gibson there in that spot for Detroit. Add a couple free agents in the offseason. And this team could be really close. Almost like what the Rangers have been recently. Tell me what you think about, think about that trade, Detroit fans. Tell me what you think about that trade, Anaheim fans. And all the other fans in the land, comment in the comment section. Get yourself subbed up so you can hear this fine content on a regular basis because I'll be doing lots more of these videos. Next, the Edmonton Oilers. And I mean, is there any team in the land that needs Gold anymore? You hear it over and over and over again in Edmonton. I'm an Edmonton Oilers. I live in Edmonton. I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. And would I like me some Gibson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would I like me some Gibson? Of course. And this is what we always got to look at. I didn't look at it Detroit because they've got cap space coming to the yin yang. They can do that deal without even giving up cap space. So don't have to worry about that too much. But here in Edmonton, things aren't as rosy. Uh, eight, eight million, almost just under nine million in cap space for the off season here. Um, this is going to have to get creative in order to for them to do something like this. But let's face it. Look at the numbers here for uh, – look at the numbers here for their goaltenders right now. And you just have to watch. I mean, the defense is bad, but the goaltending is bad too. Not a good combination. I don't think the goaltending is as bad as people say it is, but a 3.11, .901, for Miko Koskinen, by the way, with their defense, it's not horrible, horrible. It's about average to below average. Mike Smith, though, struggled mightily this year, and he's 40 years old, signed for one more year, so he would end up being the backup. Again, we don't know if Edmonton would be on Gibson's no-trade list here. We're assuming that he would like to go play with McDavid and, you know, a, a, a star team like this and maybe the challenge of helping them become better defensively. And, be, you know, he could do a lot for this team. So Koskinen would be coming off the books, which uh, if they were to trade Gibson, you would add $6 million onto the $9 million they already have, and that would only leave them $3 million. I think in this deal, they're going to have to take a player back. And I would hope that maybe you can get away with Barry, but I don't know. Patrick Beek seems like a pretty smart general manager. I doubt he would do something like that, but if he could, that would be lovely. Uh, Cassian, maybe they want somebody there that can fight the battles for their young players in the next little while, but either one of those deals, they're kind of doing Edmonton a favor, so you're really going to have to give some prospects for this, and I think this where this, this is where this could break down. Uh, they're they're going to be looking at a significant prospect. I think they're going to be asking for Broberg. I doubt Marcus Nimalainen is going to get it done. Broberg or uh, uh, Miners, Holloway, tough one to give up. But I mean, you got it for a guy like Gibson. You're going to have to give up something big like this and their first round pick. And the problem with that is in Edmonton land. The first round pick to, to uh, Holland, the general manager, is like he just, you have to absolutely rip it out of his hands. 
He hates giving up his first round picks. Hates, hates, hates it. In Detroit, never, hardly ever did. And he hates it here. And the reason why that is, especially in Edmonton, is you can pick the guy that wants to be there. And you got to make sure Gibson wants to be there. Now, if he wants to be there, you just might be able to rip it out of his hand. The other thing you could do is, uh, and I know is uh, you could look at Jesse Puglia Harvey. He needs a contract right away this year. Anyways, 2022, I really don't want to give up yams. I mean, I don't want to give up either one of them, but one of those guys may have to go no matter what you look, how you look at it. They got to get paid. So, a Jesse Puglia Harvey, um, if you give up something like that, you might be able to give your first and a lesser prospect so you can keep Broberg because I won't want to give up Broberg and maybe you can get away with Marcus Niemelainen. What would you do? What do you think, Edmonton Oilers fans? Would you give up that much? For a goaltender that looks like he's been struggling, but really, in the right situation, when you get back to the Gibson's fire back in him and knowing that he has a chance to win a cup all over again, which I really think has been the problem there in Anaheim, I got to do it, man. I think I got to do it. Tell me what you think, Edmonton Oilers fans, and sub yourself up for this kind of contact on a, content on a regular basis. I'm going to be looking at off-season what players, what teams are going to be doing the off season all through the year, uh, up and through the playoffs? I'll be doing playoff predictions and all that kind of stuff like that. And I want you to be part of it. I want you to. I really, really do. Okay, Washington Capitals. That would be the next one. Apparently, they were after Flurry this year, and again, we're going to have that the rearing its ugly head, the cap space problem cap space problem here they got to sign defensemen Justin Schultz uh, Nick Jensen uh, with or sorry uh, Michael Kempney which maybe they don't sign them but they're going to have to replace them and cap and the capitals are not all that deep in their farm system so it's going to be a difficult trade to make for them and I think it's going to have to definitely be a player back Maybe somebody like Lars Eller, a 32-year-old. It's possible. I mean, you can't have no... You have to have some veterans there, is what I'm trying to say. In Anaheim, that is. And a guy like Lars Eller, who's won a cup, he's 32 years old, he has one year left on his deal, might not be a bad play for them. I mean, I don't think they're going to be jumping all over themselves to get a guy like that. But if they can get a good enough package with the rest of the deal... To bring in a guy like Eller wouldn't be that bad for them, which would leave them, which would cut three million into the cap space because Gibson's making six point two, as we know, because you've watched the whole video and saw all of this, right? Of course you have. Uh, so a guy like Lars Eller, it's going to be their first round pick, and basically you're selling the farm on prospects here. Oh, and Vitek Vanacek. If you think Vitek Vanacek is as good as Gibson, you don't make this deal. I'm certainly not so sure about that. I know he's had a good year this year. Not a bad year this year. He's 26. He could go off a little bit, but is he going to go Gibson off? I mean, it was pretty clear they were in on the flurry sweepstakes this year. So if Gibson was available... Now, I know Washington's fans, well, we'll give him Ilya Samsonov. Well, Ilya Samsonov has been absolutely terrible this year and hasn't really hit his stride for quite a while now. I, I, if I'm Anaheim, I'm like Vanacek, Eller, and a first-round pick, and I'm picking prospects, man. Uh, whatever prospects I can pick off of their – Roster, which actually isn't all that much. I guess Hendrix Leperrier or Vincent Iorio, who had a really good year in college this year, I believe it was. Uh, am I wrong? He's from Coquitlam, BC, so it probably wasn't college. It was Brandon Wheat Kings, 38 points in 51 games. You know, guys like that, 
And if they really like Vanacek, you just might be able to pick up Gibson and Washington. And let's face it, Washington is, their window's like almost shut. They need to win right now. And one way to do that is to get a shutdown goaltender like Gibson. That's why they were going for Flurry. You know, if you can get guys like Shosturkin, Vasilevsky, and I believe Gibson in the right situation is up there. If he was if he was able to go to Washington, by the way, he's from Pittsburgh, which isn't far away, so he might be fairly motivated. Almost for surely, Washington's not going to be on his list of no-trade teams, I would think. So I think it's very possible, and I think that Washington would definitely be interested. Tell me what you think, Washington Capitals fans and Anaheim fans that are watching this video. Make sure you're subbing yourself up so you can listen to this fine content on a regular basis. And here's the next big one. Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, has there been any more talk besides maybe the Edmonton Oilers? Maybe even not. Maybe it's been the most talk of the year. And especially when what we see, what happens in the playoffs, of course. But goaltending has been a big issue with Toronto this year. Let's flat out say it. Jack Campbell could be super hot and super cold and... He needs to be signed this year. I have a feeling that Jack Campbell, I don't know, if he takes a homer discount of $4 million, but still, do you really want to put your hopes on Jack Campbell after what you've seen him go up and down the way he has so far his career at Edmonton? Jake Muzzin is not the answer. He never was the answer. I didn't like it when they picked him up. The bad part is, is he's making, is he making $5 million? Oh, my gosh. No, not Jake. Did I say Jake Muzzin? I'm sorry. Mrazic. Not Jake Muzzin. Jake Muzzin's not a defenseman. I'm not stopping this video. <laughs> it's okay. I do this on the fly and I do this as I go. Peter Mrazic is what I'm trying to say. I thought that was wrong. 3.8 million. That's still a lot till 2024. For me, in this deal, if it's going to go, they're going to let Campbell go. And Peter Morazic pretty much has to be part of the deal. Why? Again, the ugly cap space. Cap space for Toronto is just not there. This is going to have to be $8 million, and, and Gibson makes six. So Morazic's going to have to be part of the deal. You might have to get a Kerfoot in there. That would make even it out dollar for dollar. And then, because Kerfoot's still a pretty young guy, I think Anaheim could be interested in a guy like Kerfoot. You're not going to be through the roof here. It's not like it's going to be like, okay, Mrazic and Kerfoot and you get Gibson. No. It's going to take way more than that. If you've been watching this video, you can see that it's going to take stud goaltenders like Gibson. I know his numbers aren't great the last couple of years, but he has shown to be a stud goaltender. They don't come on the market very often. And if you want them, you're going to have to pay. You, you want to talk to them. Well, there's no, you want to talk to uh, to Pat Verbeek in Anaheim and say, well, you know, Gibson's numbers haven't been great lately. I don't know. And he's going to be like, well, hang up the phone then. If you don't believe he's a stud goaltender, why are you even talking to me? I'm not trading him unless you believe in him. And that's it. And I would be doing that as well. So I'm thinking that you are going to be looking at, a, I mean, they don't have too many prospects. I personally don't like their prospects. Uh, Nicholas Robertson, for me, ain't going to do it. Hey, if uh, if Pat Verbeek thinks something in him, then great. But I don't. Uh, I don't see much in their defense prospects. That's the thing. Toronto is pretty poor on the prospect front. I think you're going to have to give up Rasmus Sandin, man. Kerfoot, Morazic is doing them. They're doing you a favor by taking that Morazic deal. They don't need Morazic there in Anaheim. Man. It's like, whatever, we got a goaltender there. I mean, he'll work okay because they probably don't want to be winning the next little while anyways, but they don't need him. So that's not really a plus in the deal. Kerfoot is a sort of plus. I mean, he can fill a spot, but not great. You're going to need to throw in something like Rasmus Sandin. 
Are you willing to prepare to do that to take a goaltender like him? So give me a package, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. What do you think that they could possibly get away with giving up without giving up a Rasmus Sandin? I don't think Lila Grin's going to do it. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Lila Grin. But let's face it, Sandin's kind of buried here. Riley, Morgan Riley and TJ Brody aren't getting any, going anywhere soon. And now you got Mark Giordano, which I believe that they'll resign. And Rasmus Sandin's left out in the cold here for a bit. So you could afford to lose him, kind of. But getting Gibson could make you a contender. So what do you think, Toronto fans? Tell me about it. Sub yourself up for this fine content that I do on a regular basis. Finally, and I think the most likely place he could go, and it's going to sound weird, is the New Jersey Devils. And you're going to say, well, aren't they rebuilding? Yeah. They're rebuilding, but they've come out and said that the rebuild is almost over in New Jersey. Fitz, Fitzgerald. Fitzpatrick? Fitzgerald? I always mix the two. Uh, I think it's Fitzgerald. Uh, the general manager of, New, of the New Jersey Devils. And for good reason, you could say that. You have Sharon Govich, who is just getting better and better at 23. Jack Hughes is going to be a superstar. I believe he's going to be a superstar. 54 points in 46 games at 20 years old. This kid is not even close to being done in his progression as to being a great player. Uh, Dawson Mercer, beautiful pickup. We'll see what he does next year. He was uh, 20 years old, 37 points. Nico Heischer, of course, underrated if he can stay out of the injury front. Uh, he's a great second-line center. Maybe could be a first on a lot of teams. Jesper Brad is getting better and better. He's over a point a game this year. This team is on the precipice of being absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, they're going to have to give something up to get them. And uh, you got Siegenthaler, who has progressed amazingly this year, and I love that pickup when they picked him up from Washington. Fitzgerald, Fitz, he has been doing amazing things in New Jersey. Haven't not liked heart, one move I think he's done. Dougie Hamilton is only 28 uh, he's back on his feet again. He he's like he could be a Norris Trophy candidate still. His offense is fantastic, big boy. Adam Graves was a great pickup. Damon Severson is is fine. Ty Smith is buried in this lineup. Now, their you know first rounder looked like he's going to be an absolute stud, and then PK Subban like this team is ready, man. This team is ready to go off. What are they missing? Goaltending, goaltending. Uh, Bla Mackenzie Blackwood can't stay off the IR, and I think they could put Mackenzie Blackwood out there to Anaheim, and they can work with them, get him healthy again, and he could be a very good goaltender. It's a bit of a risk, but um, they have a, they have a chance to take a risk right now. They don't need 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 a superior goaltender in Anaheim if they're doing a rebuild. Because you don't need a guy to be knocking it out of the park every day when you're really not wanting to win-win. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the top of your list to, to win right now. But Mackenzie Blackwood, when healthy, is certainly a serviceable goaltender. So you could go Mackenzie Blackwood, and another guy they've been talking about a lot is Pavel Zaka. And I know he's had a good year. You know, not bad year. He's been up and down. But when you look at, I think they like Sharon Govich. Uh, Miles Wood is back and healthy again. He could be able to play on that left side as well. And uh, they also have some really good prospects coming up as well. Um, where Where is he on loan? Is he in the minors still al already? Alexander Holtz can play left or right. He's having a fantastic year in the AHL, so he's going to be moving up right away. And there's just something been going on with Zaka. I think it's probably salary related. Uh, he hasn't hit it out of the park yet this yet in his young career. He can get a really good chance to do so in Anaheim. So I think you could put Zaka in there. I think you could put a second round pick in 2023 in there, and maybe a guy like Shakir Makamadoulin, and of course Black Mackenzie Blackwood. Now you might not have to give all that up. But I'm just saying New Jersey has the bullets to make this move. 
And if they're serious about the rebuild being over, they can, uh, Fitzgerald can talk to, I'm saying Fitzgerald, or yeah, Fitzgerald could talk to Gibson and say, look, we need you, man. We need a goaltender of your statue and stature. And we're not talking about two, three years. We're not talking about four years down the road here. We've set ourselves up to be ready to become good right now. I think New Jersey is going to hit the free agent market this year. They're going to add as many things as they possibly can to this team. And they are getting ready to try to be a dynasty. If you speak that to Gibson, he probably is going to put his ears up to go, you know what? There's not much challenge in him to be a number one in New Jersey's uh, goaltending prospects from what I, from, you know, Cole Brady, uh, Jacob, Jacob, they're young, super young. They have very young goaltending prospects right now. Um, and they really need one, I think, now. Uh, Akira Schmid, he looked okay, but he's still only 21. Like, there's not much knocking on the door. And if they're serious about what they're doing, here in New Jersey and what they're talking about, about, you know, they, they, they weren't sellers at the deadline. You notice that in New Jersey? They didn't really sell anything off. They like their team. I think they're ready now. And I think Gibson would be the perfect fit. Also, Gibson is from Pittsburgh. So he's almost home. I like Gibson to New Jersey if Anaheim decides to make this deal. That's my full 42, everybody. Make sure you're subbing up. I want to see you all, you guys, in my live stream. I do it uh, five days a week when I feel like at o'clock, the NHL Plural of Wisdom Show. Until then, enjoy the fine content. My next trade, you never know what it's going to be. But I think, the, like Mr. Friedman said, this offseason is going to be cray-cray, and I'll be talking all about it. That's my full 42K. Bye.